was supposed to write a, a poem for a friend's wedding, and it ended up turning to be uh, about goats. Not this poem, but um, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is about goats. Of course I had to believe there was purpose to everything. The 5 a.m. chicken feed routine, the cleaning of the shit caked cages, the careful cow milking, and the carrying of runt pigs thirsty for their mother's teats. And there were the goats I thought of more as ponies when I released them to the hills, my favorite scene for the least favorite part of my day. Imagine a childhood of goats, each one vocal in their own goatish way. And imagine learning the word castration, how sharp it sounded, how my father taught me how to hoist them by their legs, wide and firm, but calm enough not to resemble violence. We were cutting off their jewels. After all, our hands needed to be silent. The first few times, I expected a joke, something about how bad it must feel. And when I tried to crack one of my own, he shook his head, said he was glad they were still too young to feel, that they wouldn't remember a thing. But I remember how he clamped the tissue with the illustrator, adjusted the rubber band, while the buckling cried the way bucklings cry when they were out in the pasture, bending their soft backs beneath a barbed wire fence, aware of what was coming when I caught up to them, grazed my fingers through their ears and nape, then carried their soft bodies back to the wooden table, where I gripped their hooves, flipped them upside down, and from where I watched throughout the struggle, the moon on the drought-riddled plains, swollen, throbbing, and ready to fall.